Spring and The Legend of the Five Rings, doing work for uh, Luke Gygax, for Gary Khan, and for Origins, and Troll Lord Games, and a bunch of other stuff, um, was exhibiting there in the vendor hall. So we had to go see Charles today, and uh, we also helped him tear down his booth at the end of the con. Which is fine. It ended at four. We're like, cool, take an hour, get down at five, head out, right? We got down at like 6.30, <laughs> because we helped him get everything out to his, his van. And we love Charles, so I was happy to help him. Uh, he's a super nice guy. And uh, I picked up some more stuff from him. I picked up a dice tray. I picked up a mouse pad. I picked up a uh, gaming pad. Uh, um, for, you know, like playing cards on. But I'm going to use it for actually my Outlaws and Law Dogs game because it's a freaking killer uh, piece of work. Um, very out west based. And uh, it, it's super cool. It, it very um, uh, Tombstone the movie. Uh, influenced, which is super cool. Uh, I really enjoy it. I actually have a print of it. But after that, Kim and I were hangry. Um, not that we were angry with Charles at all. We, we love helping him out. We love seeing him and chatting with him. Um, but we hadn't had lunch. Um, and so by then, it was like, oh, it's dinner time now. It's 6.30. we got to go get some dinner. And so we decided we were going to go to uh, the original malt, malt shop in the lovely Roseville, Minnesota. If you ever go, get down there, go go to the original mall shop. It's fantastic. Have the loaded burger with the onion rings and any kind of malt you want. They do, uh, they do amazing malts. I, I normally get the pina colada. I like the pina colada malt because it has big chunks of strawberry and pineapple and stuff like that in it. And it's just yummy. And Kim normally gets her, uh, her chocolate malt and french fries and uh so yeah we we just got home a little bit ago and but i wanted to stream because i want to paint and just hang out with you folks <sighs> well, i can take it out sorry uh food coma because the burger was so good and the underings were so good but we are going to paint uh i got some stuff i want to work on so, yeah, here we are. Yeah, see? Yeah. So, yeah, hope you all are, are having a good, good time. I'll give you one second here. Just letting people know that I'm on. Because sometimes people don't get the message. Oh, that's super cool. So my friend Luna got married today, or yesterday, yesterday, and uh, if you all remember, I painted up the, uh, the cake toppers for her. I'm trying to move that closer. But here's, here's the cuppy cake, cuppy cake toppers. There's the minis that I I painted for them. How freaking cool is that, huh? That's just super cool. Wish them congratulations because they got pitched yesterday. That's so cool.
still be on you. Everybody doing okay? I'm just waiting for folks to pop in. What are we working on? What are we doing? What are we doing with ourselves? What are we doing with our lives? Okay. Well, we were working on this lady here. So we're going to work on the red. Figure out what to do with the shield. Okay, here we go. So I need, I need some red. And I need red oxide. I that does you. I bought some new Pro Curl paints. I bought uh, orange oxide, red oxide, satin black. Magnesium, drab brown, bright pale green, and there's one other. Uh, bright shadow flash. I thought I had one other. Nope, I think it was just, just those. Um, so I'm still checking those out. I'm to that point of being tired where I like I need to go back to work tomorrow to relax. Except it's going to be a Monday after a holiday weekend. And my company wasn't closed on Friday. But I took Friday off. Both my wife and I did. And my supervisor. And one other person in my department. I wonder how, uh, I wonder how badly... My department burned to the ground on Friday. How many emails I'm going to walk into 
tomorrow. Then we're just gonna be, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Oh, no. And I'm gonna be like, well, I'm sorry, I wasn't there. <laughs> I can't help you four days later. Because we were closed for the 4th of July for Independence Day, but we were open on Friday. I just have a, I just have this nagging feeling in the back of my skull that uh, some stuff went down. message on our teams we really freaking use Microsoft Teams I can't stand it my away message on my teams is like gone fishing don't need me right <laughs> this can't be handled on Monday yeah it can't be handled find somebody else even even the supervisor for our shop was gone. So our technician supervisor was gone. A couple of our techs were out as well. So we're taking vacation, we're out, see you bye. Don't need us. Yep, don't blame me. Just this, just this naive feeling. Just this naive feeling. I'm gonna walk in tomorrow, and like two of our techs are gonna have called in sick, or run over, or what have you. Somebody else is gonna be gone. You know, it's just gonna be this cluster of. Stupidity. It makes, oh, that's the other thing too, is like my supervisor is off tomorrow. So I'm like next in line here to get all the crappy emails. In the second. Oh, I want to do the second. So I do my job. You know what I mean?
serious nerd, how you doing? Welcome in. What's going on with death shirts? Hot and humid Florida. It only got up to 83 here, here today and it was a little humid. I think it was we were in like the 70% humidity. Which is sticky out but not too bad. How you doing tonight? Sapphire 20102, hello. You just got home, Myth? Nice. Yeah, we just, I just got home myself, for the most part, like, not quite an hour ago. What's going on, Sapphire? How you doing tonight? How are teens in your neck of the woods? to Convergence today, which is a giant uh, nerd convention, more fandom based, but we were there to see our friend Charles Urbach, who's a, a fantasy artist, he had a, a booth there, then we helped him tear down his booth at the end of the, end of the day, so, Kevin and I are a little tired tonight, a little, little tired, a little sleepy. But I still wanted to stream, I wanted to say hi to everybody. And we had such a great stream on uh, on Wednesday that I didn't want to lose that momentum. The convention was good, um, we just basically hung out in the vendor hall. I don't really care that much for, because it's mostly panels and stuff like that, like they have voice actors and actors from TV shows and cartoons and stuff like that there, and which is cool, but I don't need to go and hear them talk or pay 50 bucks to have them sign something for me or anything like that. So there's not really a whole lot of gaming going on, and that's what I like to do. Um, there's, there's some board games and stuff like that, like in some of the other rooms, but meh, whatever. Uh, I like the vendor hall because there's a ton of, ton of cool stuff in there, but um, Charles Erbach is a friend of mine. He, is, he was a vendor at, uh, at Convergence, and we went there to see him. We saw him on Saturday night for dinner. I uh, took him to a pizza place up here. <sighs> Excuse me, sorry. So, yeah, I'm Yanni. And, uh, and then took him back to his hotel last night. But we like to go and hang out. And I bought a couple more pieces from him. That all, more useful pieces like a, a gaming mat and a mouse pad and a, a dice tray and stuff like that. With his art on it. So. And 
it says I was unloading the car of stuff I just bought at uh, Wally World and stuff from work today, camera gear. That's cool. Well, it was mostly after helping him tear down his booth and and haul it up to his out to his vehicle. So there was a lot of uh, you know taking the the booth down and moving boxes and crates and putting art away and putting dice trays away and putting yeah well, it was all types of stuff. So uh, what types of panels were there at the convention? It was like. It's kind of like, like I said, it's like, kind of like a big fandom type of a, of a convention. So there's like uh, DEI uh, in voiceover work for cartoons or movies, you know, stuff like that. Taking down gear can take a while to work. Yeah, absolutely it can. I was at an hour or two to break down the room, or the booth. I was about two and a half hours to break down the booth and then put it all in his van because the, the vendor hall closed at four we started breaking it down around quarter to four just by getting like little stuff grabbed like all the uh, uh, price plaques and stuff like this he's, he's got little signs that like tell you how much each thing is and then, uh, and then just starting to take it all down. So yeah, we we left. We finally got back to our car and left at like six thirty. And some of that was kind of like a hurry up and wait kind of a deal too, where it's like, oh, we need to get this out and then put it on the the cart and then take it out and wait for the elevator and blah blah blah. blah. So yeah, it was kind of a, it was a long process, but it was faster, um, hey Led, how you doing, um, it was faster than he normally, had. normally it would take him like three or four hours to take it all down or something like that, and it, with Kim and I self, it was like boom, 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 and everything was down, out the door, stuff. But I was, we were happy to help him. Two ads. Stupid ads. I wish I could shut the ads off. So I just turned the ads off for a while. Put it down. Let's say, hey Tom, have not been to Convergence, do not see planned games, seem more like one of those more chaotic cons for unplanned game, and I need a plan going in. Convergence is definitely that. It's a, uh, Yeah, it's and it's a lot of panels of like, oh, we're gonna go see so and so talk about 
their role in whatever. We're going to go talk about um, uh, underwater basket weaving in the avocado jungle of death, you know, or some. Or we're going to talk about this movie, or we're going to talk about this show, or it's more of a fandom anime, comic book, TV show, uh, fandom kind of a convention. So, yeah, it, it's harmonic convergence is kind of cool because they have a lot of different um, musical acts show up on Saturday nights, so that's kind of neat. But that's my that's really not my shtick. Like the gaming, a lot of the gaming is board games and card games based. There's not really a lot of role playing games. And it is very much your uh, I appreciate that demand. Uh, the, the, it's very much a how do I want to say this? Convergence is very much a uh, Everybody, which all conventions should be, isn't is everybody is welcome, but it's very much a, uh, um, a, 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 how do I want to say this? It's a neurodivergent convention, you know, uh, a lot of cosplay going on, um, kind of stuff like that. Um, and fairly heavy with the, uh, the, um, uh, the queer community. So, whatever. That's fine. They, they get their own, you know, they, it's, everybody's welcome. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a decent convention for fandom if that's what you're into. If I was going to vendor there as, as Midwest Miniature Guy, I probably wouldn't do very well. Uh, while there is some Well, there's some, you know, aspects of role-playing games there. Uh, it's not that a heavy-based RPG convention. There's a lot more artists. There's a lot more authors and other creatives. Uh, so, like, like leatherworking and beading and jewelry and stuff like that. Were there any good get, good guest speakers? I don't know. Uh, I would assume yes, if there were people were were going and going to those panels. I, I don't know. Um, I know that, um, what's his name? The guy that did, uh, what's his name? Keith David? The guy that did uh, the voice of uh, one of the Gargoyles from the Gargoyles uh, cartoon was there. Coolicon and lacrosse is more like Con of the North. Board games, miniature skirmish games, and pickup games with a settlers competition. Vendors. Um, tough to get RPGs other than D and D five going though. You might do well there. There were many three D printers, but I don't think many painters. You see, Coolicon for me. It 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 falls on such a weird time, and I and I, and I think it's like in. June or something like that, wasn't it? So for for me this year, I wouldn't wouldn't have been able to go, um, and I haven't been able to go like the last few years that it's been going on. Uh, I've been invited there. Hey, you should come, you know, come to Coolicon. But uh, do you know how many, like, what the attendance is there? Led. Because I would say if it's if it's under five hundred, I probably wouldn't go. Because I don't 
I don't think anybody would do that. Apt to to buy anything from me. And this says I own Ed Asner's autograph. Oh, that's pretty cool. Ed's pretty cool. Uh, I got his signature a few months before he passed away. I like Ed Asner. Oh, it's August 16th through 18th this year. I'll see if I can find numbers. Not sure. Cool. Yeah, see, that's the other thing, too, is that that's my birthday weekend. I think that, that's pretty much why I haven't been able to go. It's because it's it falls on my birthday. I don't want to work on my birthday. <laughs> Over 700, it says? Okay. I'd be able to do that one if it's yeah, yeah it's yes and that's the other thing is Renfest opens on my birthday this year yeah not that you're stalking me oh, I have so many so many friendly stalkers though but yeah we get season passes I don't want to make money on my birthday well I mean, fair, but I also would have to spend the money because it's in La Crosse. It's not just a day trip for me. Like, Con of the North is literally, like, 20 minutes away from my house. So I can go home to my own bed at the end of the day. While if I went to Cooley Con, I would have to get a hotel for the for the weekend so that's a cost I have to look into something that I could I can write off for taxes because it would be a small business expense but that would be something to be like hey Kim I'm doing this for my birthday see you bye and I'm staying down there by myself she might be like oh no you're not And while I would try and get her to go, it would be it would be difficult. I should be a vendor at the Ren Fair. Thou'st thou'st finest portrait as a knight, scoundrel, or goblin for only a hundred pounds. Huzzah! <laughs> They do, um, lately, because they haven't had some vendors, some vendors at Ren, the Renaissance Festival have either retired or they've not come back to Minnesota for various different reasons. So they've been having guest vendors show up and have like little kiosks and stuff. Um, you know, myth. You would think that a Renaissance fair would be perfect for for these, but I don't know. Maybe, but it also again, it's it's a cost thing. Like, how much is a a kiosk there that I have to set up, and then I'd have to be there for the entire weekend. Which, once again, is... Renfest, for me, is 30 to 40 minutes away. And while I could make the trip, I'd have to be there, like, at opening. So I'd either have to be there... Um, I'd either have to, you know, find a hotel again or, or camp at the Renaissance Festival, and I really don't want to camp at the Renaissance Festival. I am, I am not... I used to go camping with my family when I was a kid. I have absolutely no camping gear whatsoever. Yeah, then I can't walk around, I can't... I can't be a patron, you know, and talk with folks that are walking through and, you know, stuff.
stuff like that. So. It would be tough. Too bad I don't have a traveling booth on wheels so you can leave when you want to at Red Fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Pack it up, pack it in. Get out. Right? And again, it just makes me wonder, like, how much are they charging for a kiosk for the weekend? You know, is it going to be some outrageous amount, or, or what? I mean, that would be the way to do it, Myth. A little moving cart. Move around. Well, that's the thing is that they they rent out the kiosk, so I would have to rent whatever they provided for the vendor. I wouldn't get. I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have the ability to have my own traveling booth. Very much dependent on their their stuff. What am I doing with that shield? I mean, you imagine wooden wheel. Yeah, Lead Logic has a good point. I imagine wooden wheels, medieval cart, many broken swords and pole arms. Yeah, trying to move. 3D printed figures or plastic figures or even pewter figures like these, like, you know, I don't want to bend that sword, right? That would be bad. The bin of the severed heads. Yep. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I guess something like a miniature western wagon or Monty Python's type card. Yeah. That's the thing, is they wouldn't allow me to do that. They don't allow patrons or or even vendors to, to bring in their own, like, little vehicle or whatever. You have to have, like, a... It's a stationary kiosk type of a thing there. But I get where you're going with it. It's a great idea. I guess I'm just not super keen on doing it. Which character am I painting? I am painting up a Dark Sword Miniatures, um, basically, pin-up girl in chainmail bikini. Uh, let's see if I can find her again here. It's Elmore Masterworks. She is. Pin up female warrior in chainmail number four is this one here. And then I've got I'm also working on um pin up female warrior in chainmail number three as well. Oh, she's definitely a Red Sonia type character for sure. I think this is the this is the number three right here. Yeah, 
The only thing I have left to do on her basically is the original Or savage rogue. Yeah, she'd be a rogue. Probably not her. But for her, for sure, because she's got a smaller shield. lifting and stuff. Let's work on her for a little bit.
more like a minty green.
kind of got some some Raycon flesh shade here. So I'm gonna smooth this out just a little bit. Fireworks going off again tonight. Fourth is over, knock it off. Have to be able to sleep. So, Lynn, I saw that you went white water rafting, huh? How was that?
It was a random car that has a Wisconsin City scratch off an adventure or two to do there. I got it for Father's Day. Oh, that's cool. Nice. And you survived, so even better. The night before, as we got near there, we scratched it off, and sort of a bummer would have brought Keens, River Shoes, and True Swim Trunks. Uh, uh, next time, make sure you just throw those in the car. You never know. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. Normally I would have muted my mic, but I did not have a second to uh, to do so. So my apologies if I blew anybody's ears out. With my sneeze. It was a bit scary. There are class five, four rapids, which means get your blank together. This is real life or death. Listen to the coach who tells you all when and how to battle. Oh, yeah. You've fallen out of kayaks and gone over stuff you shouldn't have? Yikes. Death by water is one of the, the I guess, the phobia of mine. Like, I do not want to drown. You got tr you got trapped on the wrong side of a full water laden kayak, but you survived. Yowzers! It's the even years you do the death defying stuff. Yeah, jeez. No oh, thanks, I'm out. I see meth left. Everybody's left. Oh, it's just you and me, lad. It's just you and me. You're trapped in here with me. So you get to leave and everything. What was the other part? Where is it? 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 It was dark gold brain. That's what I got. There it is. Dark, gold, dark golden brown. That was the other color I picked up. Did not want to pay fifty dollars for the USB. Uh, Quincy and my photos pedaling over the rapids look like we're serious about not dying, I would say. <laughs> I'm always serious about not not dying. So let that be the price point for the surf's record. Yeah, I think we're sticking with like, uh, I think we're sticking for like 15 bucks for the surf's record is what we're going with. Not 50, 15. 
Maybe because the kids were in it. Yeah, maybe, yeah. They were behind you, you know, screaming. The death in your eyes. Thinking this is dad has fine this is how dad finally really figured out how to kill us. By accident. Except we gave him the card. We did this to ourselves. Says I went with my dad on the Ottawa River at 18 years old. That was fun. So I knew it would be fun, but also I'm old and risk averse now. Yeah. We'll have to see if one of these adventure cards said zip lining. Would you would I do it? Uh no. No, I'm I came to realize um at Valley Fair that I do not do rides well, and that was at like 35 or 40, so I was like, hmm, I think I'm done with rides, guys, I can't fit on them, then I was, I was at my heaviest at that time too, so I was like 305, 310 pounds, and yeah, I was just like, eh, these aren't for me anymore, you guys want to go on the roller coasters or the whatevers, or the, Death Towers, or, you know, go ahead, I'll, I'll wait for you here, you know, I'll go, I'll go watch the caricaturists, or I'll, you know, what have you, but I was never one for, like, we're gonna go on the Screaming Tower of Horror, and I'm like, no, man, I don't think so, then I'm, I'm height, I, I'm scared of heights, I do not like them, at all, uh, I don't even like putting, yeah, I'm going to do the hammock ride. Yeah, I'm going to do the little water ride. That just lets the lazy float down the river ride. You know. Then maybe a cocktail in my hand. Ride. That, that, those sound fun. How about those? Let's do those. Tubing is a hammock on the water. Yes, it is. Uh, I agree. I like that. I like that. Myth is back. Yeah. I, I try not to do any of that crazy stuff. Number one, my body just doesn't like it when I do that. It tends to, it tends to hurt my back. And I'm in pain enough as it is, I just don't need any more. No more pain.
And I would never poo-poo anybody's adventurous lifestyle. Like, my wife wants to go skydiving and ziplining. I'm like, you can go right ahead. She said, oh, don't you want to do it? Absolutely not. So you wouldn't do that with me? Mm-mm. Well, why not? Don't like... Don't like it. Why would I jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Very fun to watch skydiving. Very inter... You know, folks that do that, God bless them, don't... You know... Yeah. I prefer staying inside the plane. You are absolutely correct, Leg. I do not need to be jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. Does not sound like fun to me. My buddy Greg had done it. I think he done it. he's done it a couple times. Nope. Get me out of it. I just know that I'd be the guy that would jump out of the plane, pull, you know, pull the cord when I was supposed to pull the cord, and the cord wouldn't pull, or the you know, the parachute wouldn't function, even after you know, and I just fall to my death. <laughs> Miss says I am not into doing my own stunts or heights or going really fast. Yeah. I don't mind going really fast. I will drive a car at like 100, 120 miles an hour. Legally. But. I won't get on a motorcycle and do that. Like, I, I don't. I, I don't ride motorcycles, so I, I wouldn't do that. I don't like doing that on, you know. Stuff and things. Um. I was in Taekwondo and karate for quite a while, so I know how to take a punch. So doing my own, doing those kind of like physical stunts at the time didn't bother me. And I'll sword fight, like I know how to sword fight. Um, but heights, no, I don't like. I used to not like flying. I was like, why would I? Why would I get in a plane when we could drive there? And everybody kept saying, oh, but it's faster. I'm like, mm, yeah, it's faster. But then, you know, so is falling out of the sky. And then I took my first um, jet plane ride from Seattle to Denver. And I was like, okay, all right. And everybody's asking me, oh, how was your first flight? I'm like, it was fine. You know, didn't die, which is good. And, uh, they're like, what was your favorite part? And I said, the flying. The actual flying didn't freak me out. I could look out the window, so, as long as I was by the window. If I could look out the window, I was fine. Because I could see, whether, whether, whether we were above the clouds or not. You know, I could, if I could see the land, okay, cool, we're right there, oh, that's kind of neat, you know see cities from 30,000 feet with just the sparkling lights. I mean, that's, that's cool. The takeoff was okay. I don't mind takeoffs. I hate landings. Hate them. Cannot stand landings. If it was just the flying, I, let's go, but I dislike landing at all, period. So, takeoffs are fine. I like the, I kind of like the feel of, of a takeoff, is kind of zooming, you know, up into the air. Flying, it's cool. Fly me around. One of the scariest landings that I have been in was coming. I flew out to Seattle quite a few years ago. And the captain kept coming on like, hey, there's going to be a lot of turbulence. There's a lot of uh, storms happening in Seattle right now. Oh, my gosh, you know, rain in Seattle. Who freaking knew, right? Uh, but there's a lot of, you know, storms happening right now, thunderstorms and stuff like that. So 
there's going to be some turbulence, um, you know, please buckle up, or, you know, whatever. Okay. And we kept, like, they kept the starting the landing procedure, and I'm like, we should be on the ground by now. Right? Because I kept feeling, I kept feeling the, the, the plane, you know, lowering through the clouds. I'm like, man, we really should be on the on the ground by now. And suddenly it was like, oh, there's buildings. Oh, there's the landing strip. Bam, we're on the ground. <laughs> it was like that was really jarring, and it was and it was it was scary um, because normally you see you know land first, and then the ground, and then you know. The touchdown. The touchdown's always a little jarring, you know, screeching the tires and all that. But it was just like, oh, buildings, oh, land, oh, pfft, here we are. Oh, I got a warning. It was like the, the clouds were so low to the ground, we didn't have a chance to, or at least my body didn't have a chance to acclimate to. We're landing now. That was a bit jarring. I didn't like it. The last uh, plane ride I was on, though, was, was nice. We It was beautiful going out there. It was 2021. I was going out for my mom's memorial to uh, Western Washington. And going over the Rocky Mountains, it was absolutely beautiful, uh, scenery, and it was just, that was fun, that was a, f a fun plane ride. It's gray for the hair. Is she done? She's done. I don't know what I want to do with the shield. I think I want to hit it with some a black wash, maybe. this out a little bit. Blitz says, agree about the landing, watching pilots doing the micro adjustments, but I understand that. What I got frustrated with was trying to understand the radio. I have adequate hearing, but I can't seem to make out garbled radio speak very well. Oh, yeah. Speak is is tough. 
tough. I don't, I don't understand it half the time, too. So we have cell phones that are better than this. Why are you still using this outdated technology? Okay, should we try... That was weird. The camera shut off and turned back on for no apparent reason. Cool. Give me one second here. It says you can listen to the local airports on the internet. It's so much easier than old days. You needed special radios, and there's a site that shows every plane in the air. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not that you're stalking me, yeah, well. You and Todd McQueen. Todd. My wife calls him Dr. Tater Todd. It's funny. Dude actually has a doctorate. He's the actual doctor. Every once in a while I'll text him. Dr. McLean, I have a question for you. He's a doctor? Yeah. He has a he has a doctorate in um I think it's marketing or something like that. He used to do the um he used to work for Major League Baseball, and he would get he would work with the the players on all the um, endorsement deals for like toys and and their likenesses and stuff like that. But yeah, he actually has a doctor. Dude's dude's pretty freaking smart um, for all his all his weirdness. Call him, call him Dr. McLean sometimes, you know, he freaks out. Be like, how do you know that? He's also a, uh, a huge Rush fan, and I don't mean Rush Limbaugh, I mean Rush the band. 
So he and I talk about Rush all the, quite a bit. Uh, he gave me a, a USB of a bunch of uh, bootleg Rush albums. I think she's done. I think I'm calling her done. Uh, you met him through a Blake 7 Ironic Common Earth. You really like that TV show. Yeah, he's a big, old, you know, old TV show fan, too. Alright, I, I gotta see something. Tired and I'm tired of being tired. Come on, go to sleep. I don't want to copy Susan Wachowski's. James Foster's got a cool one too. Todd's a nice guy though. I love Todd. That's a lot of Warhammer stuff. Okay, so it's starting out. So it's lighter. Then goes dark. Then goes. Sky Earth Moon Metallic Metal is what I was looking for. It's so tough to do. Oh, here we go. Well, I didn't play them in white. Okay, well I got I got stuff that's equivalent to this, so let's grab we've got a sky blue. I have one on the side. Light earth I don't have, electric blue I don't have, black and white that I do have. Keep on blending. That's a huge help. So, right 
side, sky blue. Got one thing brown. And white. It's just going to be on the shield, so I'm going to be on the bunch of fiddly bit stuff, so... So... I'm going to grab some sky blue, which is what we have. Brown, even though it says that. Oh, wait. I don't need to use one thing brown. I have. I have flat earths. Flat earth will work better than that. We're going to attempt Sky Earth non-metallic metal on her shield, because I think it would look cool. At least we're going to, like I said, we're going to attempt it. If this doesn't work, I'm blaming Todd. No, I'm kidding. I'm not playing. I'm blaming myself. It's totally my fault. This doesn't work. It's all Todd's fault. No, sir. Okay. I painted a ton of stuff for Todd. It's not Todd's, Todd's fault. Okay, so. First thing is first, we have our sky blue, I will even use these little squiggly bits. The Shield of Distraction, it plays MTV videos. Yeah. Back when MTV used to play videos. And not just Teenage Mother Cribs and what is it? Uh, Teen Wolf was on MTV for like music television is television is no longer music television man. It's just crap. Thanks MTV for 14 years of playing actual music videos 24/7. 
until you start getting into the t actual TV and movie industry. You pieces of crap. Alright, and then... Right outside, you're just gonna go like that. Put the window in there. And I'll show you the back of the So we're gonna give her a mountain range. Like so. real quick. Dash of Rhinox Hide. As my friend Doug always was saying, there could be a market you show MTV minus 20 years, minus 10 years. I guess it would have to be minus 40 years now. Just so it show the same video but new advertising. Yeah, exactly. And it has to be Video Killed the Radio Star by the Bubbles. Exactly the same play order. I like it. Let's do it. It's not about the journey, it's the destination. It's Chief Perry, huh? Why not? Yeah. We just constantly play Don't Stop Believing. And once we're finally done terrorizing people, we play R.E.M.'s. First we play Everybody Hurts, and then we play um, their uh, It's the End of the World as We Know It. They feel fine. As the band Rush would say, as Neil Peart had written, it's not the heat, it's the inhumanity.
Thunder Deep 96. What's happening? Nice to see you. It's been one of those weekends, man. You just got home from work? Holy crap. My condolences. Eating your cheese and crackers with your daughter before bed? Yeah, sounds yummy. You about to get back on your painting horse? Excellent. You should. Painting horse is calling. That's not bad, right? You haven't used your holder yet? Well, get on it. Totally useful. gets busy. Yeah, that is too true. My next uh, life gets busy extravaganza happens in August where it's like we go to a friend's uh, wedding reception the first weekend of August. It's so literally like a month from now. And then it's mine and my wife's birthday. Then we go to a friend's wedding. Literally in the same week. Like my mic. Everybody's been saying my mic is distant, and I can't do a darn thing about it. Kind of hollow sounding. That's really weird. Like I've never. I've, people have been complaining about it, and there's nothing I can do. I've tried working on the, uh, the mixes for it, I've tried upping the volume, I've tried getting closer to it, maybe I need a new microphone, I've had it for a few years now, it hasn't really moved, I haven't banged, banged it around or anything. Try that. Is that any better? Check one, two. Check, check, check one, two. See, I'm. If I'm doing the mic, uh, if I'm looking at the mic, it's it's basically almost red zoning. I can talk a little bit louder. A little louder. I'll try that. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I wish I could get a little louder, but this, this is as much as I can get right now.
Who is this lady warrior? She is basically a, uh, I think she's, this is pinup champion number four, I believe, in the Larry Elmore Masterworks series from Dark Sword Miniatures. You got some D&D &D minis you got to paint for a campaign? Cool. I have painted up two dragons in the last couple of days for my D&D &D game. I have not streamed the painting, so if you want to see them, they're going to be up on my uh, Facebook and uh, Facebook, Instagram, and X, and my Discord. Dwarfs, Rangers, and Bandits. Nice. I don't know. I, I guess for my first kind of launch into Sky Chrome Metallic, that's not too bad. Yeah, I've got a red dragon, I've got a blue dragon, and I've got a white dragon that I've painted up. The white dragon I've already posted, but the uh, and, I've, and I've posted the the red dragon, but I haven't posted the blue dragon. I'm still working on that one. That's not bad. Looks pretty good in the in the camera. It's going to be hard as now trying to Well normally I have, I mean that's that's a great great bit there underneath, that's a, a great observation. He says, I at times don't find the patience to get this detail. I am usually trying to paint the three million minis waiting in line. And I understand that completely. The one thing that I have been telling myself is to enjoy the process. Enjoy painting again. Don't don't worry about yeah you've got a bunch of minis waiting in line yeah I've got you know my my drawer of po my drawer of possibilities. But if I'm not having fun, why am I doing it? So, I try not to beat myself up too much. when it comes to, I need to paint this figure. So it's not frost, it's, it's, I'm trying to do chrome, and this is my first time trying to do something like this. So if, let me see if I can get to it here. This is the um, 
the search that I used. My Google image search. Check that out. I'm half expecting a micro Bob Ross painting on the shield now. I had thought about it. I've done it before. I, there was one shield that I did for a warlord that I did a stream running through with a castle over here. And it wasn't great by any means, but it looked kind of neat. Like It was fun. Yeah, like heavy metal chrome. Yep. And the one that I'm, uh, like I'm looking at this backpack for a 40k guy and it's not exactly what I want. Holy moly, some of these are just, ins just insane. This is my first attempt at doing Sky Earth, is what they call it, non-metallic metal. I'm looking at a few of them. A few other examples here. Flameon does a great job of doing non-metallic metals, and so does Daryl Nathan. You wonder if this is how Mithril should look? Um... I don't know. I don't think so. Mithril isn't so much chrome as it is its its own entity. It's its own. I would go for Mithril. I would go shiny, but not not chrome. Mithril, I guess I would use more of like a a blue. Like I would be, I would use this as like mithril, not so much this on it.
that's funny. I think that's all I'm going to do on that. I'm not going to click the right of it anymore. Let's move this out maybe a little bit here. Put my edges a little bit harder. There. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to spend hours more on this. Because it's 10.30. And I'm freaking tired. So I'll get some photos of these up on the pages. Pretty the huge. And um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just end the stream. And like I said, I'm tired. So I'll be back tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, the normal time, and um, keep going. we got more minis to paint. So, thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And, uh, and there's, nobody, there's nobody to raid right now. There's nobody to raid. I'm not going to read. So, have a wonderful night, folks. Thank you all so much. And we'll see you tomorrow night at the normal, regular time at 8 o'clock. Win twins. Bye.